Just another story suppressed by the liars and whores of the press. was arrested for assassinating one of Turkey's most prominent newspaper editors. Months after, he was smuggled out of prison by Grey Wolves. One of the first things he did after getting out was to send a letter to the leading Turkish newspaper threatening to kill the Pope. The Pope was warned that there may be an attempt on his life. Two years later, he was on his way to Rome to carry out his intentions, helped every step of the way by the Grey Wolves Network. Already, the Pope has received two death threats. There were secret negotiations with several governments to ensure his security. On May 13, 1981, Mehmet Ali Shah shot Pope John Paul II. He was seriously wounded. The Italian police had abundant evidence implicating the Grey Wolves in the shooting. But little of this evidence was presented in the trials. Why? Who shot the Pope? 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 In the Rush first trial in 1981, Ajar claimed he was an independent international terrorist without any ideology. The trial concluded that an unknown shadowy force was behind the conspiracy despite the great amount of evidence pointing to the Grey Wolves. Six months after the first trial, Ajar began, little by little, to bring the Bulgarians into the story. In September 82, Reader's Digest published the story The Plot to Kill the Pope, written by Clara Sterling, claiming that the shooting was instigated by the Bulgarian secret services who were controlled by the KGB. In November, Aja stated that several Bulgarians living in Rome helped him with the shooting and that it was originally planned while he was in Bulgaria in the summer of 1980. The Western media picked up on this and made immediate headline news and continued to give the Bulgarian connection prominent news coverage for the next four years. The Reagan administration in the United States had claimed from the beginning the Soviets were behind it, of course in keeping with their claim that the Soviets were behind all international terrorism. This all was terribly convenient for the U.S. administration. We used this as another reason for the huge military buildup. Claire Stone, Michael Levine, and Paul Hammes were the main fabricators of the Bulgarian connection for the Western Union. Now, Michael Levine is, of course, along with Claire Sterling, one of the primary uh, disseminators of the Bulgarian thesis. Paul Hens, another cited expert in this case, was at one time the CIA station chief in Turkey. Most of the people who are involved with the Bulgarian thesis and who have been pushing it so hard are not, by any means, real journalists in the normal sense. Both Claire Sterling and Michael Dean have worked on behalf of Western intelligence, in some cases actually breaking the laws of Italy to support the right wing there. The New York Times, the Christian Science Monitor, the McNeil Lehrer Hour, and the NBC Nightly News unquestioningly towed this party line and turned to these three as experts in the field of terrorism. And of course, the rest of the media followed 
suit. What the press didn't say was that these three have long histories of working for the CIA and its disinformation service. The mass media would never mention any of this. Why? Ajah shifted his story so many times and in so many directions it was difficult to keep up. Why did Ajah change his testimony so often? Ajah was coached to implicate the Bulgarians while in jail by prison wardens, intelligence officers, and Vatican officials, all members of the P2 Lodge. P2 Lodge. The P2 Lodge, an illegal branch of the Masonic Lodge, developed into a state within a state, including many of the most powerful and influential in Italy. The P2's interest in blaming the Soviets was primarily to discredit the Latin in Italy. P2 Lodge. So Ajah played along, gaining himself more attention in the courts and in the media. Who shot the Pope? Who shot the Pope? Who shot the Pope? Who shot the Pope? Mehmet Ali Aja. Finally, five years after the assassination attempt, the jury had to acquit the Bulgarians for lack of evidence. Will the media print an apology for misleading the public? Of course, of course not. not. Um, the big lie has been so effectively uh, spread um, that that's what most people think of. Oh yeah, the Bulgarians tried to kill him on behalf of the KGB. What are you trying to get at? Turn off your TV. Turn off your radio. Burn the newspaper. newspaper, newspaper.